Hi, my name is Andy Davis and I'd like to welcome you to this E3D tutorial on Decimation Master. Uh, Decimation Master is a decimation plugin for ZBrush. It's one of the world's best uh, decimation programs. It's really versatile and you can get some really great results with it. Um, during the tutorial I'll be showing you how to use the basics of Decimation Master and while it's not an extremely comprehensive overview, you should be able to get a gist of what uh, all the functions do um, and even if I don't show them I'll explain them to some extent. Um, if you don't have Decimation Master um, in ZBrush you can get it from the Pixelogic Download Center so you just go to this URL here and then go to ZBrush Plugins um, and then you've got um, a bunch of uh, different options here so you've got uh, plugins for ZBrush 3, 4, R2 and R3 um, I'm using R3 at the moment and uh, you can just go down and then find Decimation Master which is here um, then download it and um, put it into your Z startup directory uh, under Z plugs um, and then restart ZBrush and you should be good to go. Alright let's get started. Okay the first thing we want to do is go up to the preferences menu here and uh, you'll notice there's a decimation master menu and uh, it's got a number of options here um, that you should change from the default um, by default I don't think use 64 bits uh, decimator is on um, currently ZBrush um, is a 32 bit program I think they are going to make it uh, 64 bit for version 5 but uh, the decimation process can be quite memory intensive so um, it's always a good idea to keep this on. Um, you want to check use and keep polypaint um, unless there's a specific reason you don't want to keep your polypaint. Uh, this allows Decimation Master to, uh, to keep the textures that you've painted so you know, unless it's a special reason you can get this and uh, keep it on here um, and everything else can stay as default. Um, it's usually pretty good defaults with a number of threads. Um, so once you've done that just click Save Preferences and then it'll save them there. And then you want to go to the Z plugin menu and then dock it over to the side here. And then you want to go over to the Decimation Master um, menu. And uh, we've got a bunch of options here, which I'll explain. Freeze borders. It stops the edges of your mesh becoming decimated. Say so you have a tileable mesh, so like a sci-fi tile or you know some floor tiles or uh, just any model that needs to uh, stick together seamlessly later um, if you use freeze borders it won't decimate the very edges of the of the mesh so once it's all decimated you can still lock them together and it will all fit together perfectly well uh, keep uvs uh, basically this does what it says it keeps the uvs and uh, that you have on your mesh and it optimizes them at the same ratio as the mesh itself so you know, if you have some UVs they'll keep in line with the decimation so you know you can still use them later on. Uh, Pre-process current now uh, this is to do with subtools if you hit pre-process current it will only pre-process the current selected subtool and uh, if you hit pre-process all it will pre-process all the subtools. Uh, percentage of decimation this is the amount uh, of decimation you want as a percentile value so if you have you know a hundred polygon mesh and then you reduce it down to 20 percent uh, it will reduce it down to 20 polygons um, this is the amount of polygons as quads um, so you can set a number here so if you have a million polys and you set 200k it will set it to 200,000 and then uh, points would be 200,000 vertices with its current um, setting. Decimate current will decimate the currently selected subtool. Decimate all will decimate all the subtools that you have um, at the same ratio. Uh, delete cache. When you run Decimation Master, you pre-process it. It makes a bunch of temporary files um, and this allows you to delete all the cache and delete those temporary files if you don't want them later on. Uh, and export all subtools that will export all the subtools that you have in a decimated form. 
Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to we're going to go to our sub tools, um, and we're going to turn off poly paint for all of these for the moment, um, and then we're going to go to freeze borders and we'll select freeze borders. Uh, I don't have any UVs on this, so I'm not going to keep the UVs, um, and then I'm going to se select. Uh, pre-process all and uh, this will go through and pre-process all the meshes for decimation okay once the pre-processing is done um, you won't see any visual change on your mess if I just click on to polyframe and we'll go up and you can see that the polygon, uh, polygon count is still extremely high. Um, so it's quite detailed. If I stick a number, say 80%, and then click decimate current, it will decimate it down to 80% of the current value. And there's a decimated mesh. You see, if you notice now, it's all it's all triangles, um, but it's all been decimated uh, uniformly. So if I undo that, and if I want to go down to twenty percent, and click decimate current, You can see that the decimation is much more aggressive. Um, but if you turn off polyframe, it's very, very hard to see a difference. Say if you wanted a specific polygon value, you could type in um, 1000K, which would be a million polys here, and then click decimate current. Um, and you can, you know, it's hard to tell a difference between it. I mean, it's only when you get pretty close that you can see that it's um, decimated. But you know, this in generally wouldn't really matter. You wouldn't be able to pick up this uh, sort of triangulation on a normal map, really, because this is extremely close. And you know, it would once it's all smooth and uh, with smooth shading, and you wouldn't be able to tell really. Um, but we'll do that. Now, one cool feature that I wanted to show, which uh, as far as I'm aware isn't available in any other decimation uh, program, is that you can actually use masks um, in ZBrush. So you can mask out areas that uh, you don't want to be decimated as aggressively. So to do this, it's just like normal ZBrush masking. So basically, uh, say if we wanted the uh, area around the eyes uh, to not be decimated at all, we can just hit control and then paint um, around the eyes. And this area here won't be decimated whatsoever. Um, and say we wanted around the lips and some of the finer wrinkles on the cheek, for example. Um, and another thing you can do as well, um, if you want to have um, different areas decimated at different strengths, then you can change the opacity, um, the intensity of your mask. So if you put this down to 50% now, and we paint around the nose, this will stop um, ZBrush from decimating the nose. It will decimate it at 50% of the strength. And then say if we go down to 25% and then we do the forehead and around the sides of the face. And the chin, for example. And then say we wanted the ears to be 
only 10%. We can go up to the ears, reduce the opacity of the mask, and then paint the ears. So currently we have uh, one, two, three, three or, three or four different um, strengths of decimation. And if we hit pre-process current, um, it will pre-compute. You can't do it once you've masked and then you use decimation. You have to pre-process the mesh because um, it has to take into account the masking. So if you just try and decimate, it won't work. And then we can go, and if we view the polyframe, see everything is um, the same as it was before. Now, if we set this to a million polys, it will still make the entire mesh a million polys, but um, it will vary the aggressiveness of the decimation by the masks that you've put on it. So, you know, it might, it, for something that was 100% uh, opacity for the mask um, it will totally ignore and then it will reduce um, depending on the opacity of the mask for the other places that we put so what we'll probably end up if we do this is um, it will have a bunch of polys all around here and then all the places that aren't masked it will very aggressively decimate so let's try that out yeah so basically here uh, where we've masked out the 100% uh, this is um, you know, probably 900,000 polys, and then all the rest of it makes up the million, um, which isn't ideal. Um, but if we set this to, say, 50% decimation, let me hit decimate current. And we get a much more uh, reasonable result. See, and you can't really tell here that much but if we put polyframe on and then go right up close. Um, you can see that near the eyes, uh, etc. It's been triangulated, but it hasn't been decimated at all. But around the edges where, where we did the mask, you can see that uh, it's reduced the aggressiveness of the decimation um, around the head, for example, is particularly noticeable. You know, if we have polyframe on, you can see where we painted the masks uh, has been protected uh, on a sliding scale. Um, you know, so the ears are, have been more aggressively de uh, decimated than the mouth. Um, the nose has been more aggressively decimated than the eyes. You know, and the head has been really aggressively decimated. Um, so this is well worth using if you've got you know, a limited budget um, for your high poly model and you know you want it to bake fast um, or you want to generate displacement or you know anything like that then you know you can always mask the areas that are really really important and then the areas that aren't so important such as you know the back of someone's head or something like that that's going to be covered by a hat or hair you know you can there's no point wasting polys on areas that aren't going to be seen so it makes sense to uh, decimate these um, you know, more aggressively and also if you'll notice when we've got if you put colorize on and turn polyframe off um, it's tried to keep the poly paint um, the best as it can um, there is some you know, I mean it's pretty good actually. I mean, it's still based uh, upon the resolution, I think, but um, you know, it's generally still there. And if we frame our mesh, you can't really see much difference. I mean, there's you know, around the areas that we masked, um, the poly paint's identical. Uh, around the head and stuff, some things have got a little bit more blurry, but you know, that's the trade off that you have between quality and performance. So yeah, um, I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and I uh, hope you learned something. I'll see you again soon.